Welcome. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of Bethel Church, I would like to welcome all of you to this virtual service of worship on this, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. In addition to our normal order of service, uh, today we will also have a piece of liturgy to remember and to honor our veterans of our military uh, service and their families. Also this Sunday, we start our 2021 stewardship campaign and ask you to please uh, check your emails, those of you who are rostered members at Bethel Church and, and find there a, uh, a copy of a financial pledge sheet, uh, a commitment of your time and talent, and we ask that you return those by November 22nd that we may dedicate them together as we look forward to the year ahead in the life and service and fellowship that we enjoy here at Bethel Church. If you would please join with me as we offer God our, our prayer and ask for his blessing on this time of worship. Let's pray. Come Holy Spirit, come and blow your wind within us and among us Refresh us, sustain us, encourage us as we come now to worship you. In the name of, of Jesus Christ, as we dedicate now this prayer, this time of worship, and indeed our very lives. Amen. Let's continue in the spirit of worship as we read responsively this week from the 70th Psalm. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, to make haste to help me. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forevermore, God is great. Amen.
If there are any children watching the worship video with you today, ask them to come forward and pay particular attention. I have a message intended especially for them. Hey guys, how are you today? Hey, I wanted to ask you a, a quick question. How many of you get a thrill out of knowing the right answer? What I mean is, in school, if the teacher asks you what is 8 divided by 2, and you know that the answer is 4, do you like to raise your hand real high and, and hope that you'll get called on because you want to share with the class what you know? Or perhaps you're in English and, and the teacher asks you what is the definition of a noun? You know that the answer is a person, place, or thing. And so you want to share your knowledge, you raise your hand, you hope the teacher will call on you so you can tell her what you know. We enjoy that, don't we? We enjoy knowing things and being recognized for knowing them. Well, you know, today in worship, we're going to talk about a, about a different kind of knowing. It's the kind of knowing that we sometimes call wisdom. And that kind of knowing isn't the kind of knowing that is the answer to a math problem or, or to an English question. Wisdom is knowing God and knowing about God and having God know you. It's the kind of knowing that, that you use when you wait patiently in the line for the drinking fountain and don't try to cut ahead. Wisdom is the kind of knowing that, that encourages you to share your toys with your brothers or sisters. Wisdom is the kind of knowing that, that gives you patience uh, with classmates that aren't necessarily always nice to you. Wisdom is the, the kind of knowing that, that Jesus was really, really good at. It's the kind of knowing that God wants you and me to be really good at, too. Would you pray with me? I'll say a line if you would repeat after me, please. Dear God, thank you for sharing your wisdom with me. And help me to use it always and often. For Jesus' sake, amen. Our first lesson is from Psalms chapter 78, verses 1 through 7. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Let's take this opportunity to offer to God this our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that oftentimes we have relaxed our faith. We have allowed ourselves to become jaded. Our suspicion begets slander, criticism, prayerlessness, and pessimism. How easily we've allowed ourselves to crumple under the stresses of our lives. Forgive us for our smallness of faith. In your mercy, hear us for Jesus' sake. May we continue those thoughts in the silence of each of our hearts. Friend, St. Paul was right when he told us that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
Rest assured, we are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Second lesson is from Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her, and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. The beginning of wisdom is the most, desire, is the most in sincere desire for instruction, and concern for instruction is love of her, and love of her is keeping of her laws, and giving heed to her laws is assurance of immortality, and immortality brings one near to God. So the desire for wisdom leads to a kingdom. Would you pray with me, please? O oh, gracious and, and loving God, may our time of reflection on these words of ancient scripture be a a guide and a beacon in our modern day lives. May they inform us, may they sustain us, may they encourage us as we grow in the grace and knowledge of your dear son, Jesus. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <laughs> You know, have you ever met anyone who doesn't enjoy a, a good story? For all our differences these days, be they political, social, or economic, we invariably meet in the middle in the context of story. It's a lost art, isn't it? The ability to create a, a narrative arc out of times and dates to convert monochrome information into a technicolor tale. It's a bit like we talked with the kids, the, the difference that between knowledge and, and, and wisdom. There's a lot you can know, especially in our age of technology when all manner of trivia can be dialed up on your smartphone from the atomic number of silver to the name of the Asian cook on the TV reruns of Happy Days, we can find out with a stroke of our finger on the screen. But knowing that silver is atomic number 47, or that Pat Morita played the role of Arnold Takahashi on Happy Days, doesn't necessarily make us wise. Wisdom has an enduring quality that far exceeds one's ability to be competitive each night on Jeopardy. Because wisdom, wisdom considers not only what we know, but, but how we put that knowledge into use. Wisdom takes into consideration more than, than our intellect. It, it embodies our character. It embodies the depth and, and the direction of our souls. You know, I, I think that's the reason the Bible speaks more about wisdom than it does knowledge. It's important to be knowledgeable, of course, but it's far more important to be wise. In our passage today, from the wisdom of Solomon, the king sings the praises of wisdom. Using feminine in imagery, Solomon paints an, an amazing picture for us to behold. He speaks of wisdom as radiant and unfading. She can be found by those who seek her, he tells us. She makes herself known to those who desire her. Wisdom is a, a willingness to be instructed, to be changed. To embrace wisdom is to have an assurance of our immortality, our 
eternal intimacy with God. So why, given this much credit, is wisdom such a rare commodity? Why are we so deficient in in that which the ancients treasured and God ordained? Well, perhaps, just perhaps, is because we moderns have lost the capacity for story, for telling each other in the forthcoming generation the, the old, old story of Jesus and his love. It's a story that cannot be found on the internet, not on your, smart, on your smartphone, not really. You can't Google God's love and appreciate what that really means. As the popular hymn suggests, you have to experience it. You have to pass it on. And you know the psalm that Mallory read to us a few minutes ago asks us to do just that. To open our mouths in parable, to utter sayings of old, to speak of things we've heard and known, things that we've learned from our ancestors. We're not to keep such wisdom hidden. We're to tell the next generation the glorious deeds of God, the wonders that he has done. Unabashedly, unapologetically, with reverence and fervor, it is up to us to embody that which the Bible calls wisdom and to share that wisdom with our children. You know, I believe that if the Christian faith is to survive, we must be willing to speak out on its behalf, to share with others, especially our young people, what it means to know God in the person of Jesus Christ. Such wisdom can and must be passed along. Certainly, our kids won't encounter it in secular society. Quite the opposite, actually. Culture culture would applaud our extinction as a necessary step on the road to political globalization, an arena wherein God is subservient to human interest and not the other way around. The wisdom of Solomon that we read this morning, scholars believe, was written a a few years before the birth of Christ. It was written, they think, by a learned Jewish author who likely lived in Egypt during the time of its occupation by Rome. He writes to encourage his fellow Jews to take pride in their faith and to speak out despite secular prohibition in order to preserve their unique understanding of God. The very God who at the time was in the process of making himself known through the gift of his only beloved son. And you know when you think of it, are you and I really all that different from our ancient Jewish ancestors? We too, like them, live in a time of opposition, a a time of so-called occupation. Granted, our enemy is not an invading army, but rather a force not even visible to the naked eye, a microscopic virus that replicates at will in our human cells. It's affected us in so many ways, not the least of which is, is curtailing the active work of Christian enlistment. COVID-19 has separated us and consequently made it more difficult to share Christian wisdom with each other and with our children. It's put a unique but necessary burden on parents and grandparents, uncles and aunts to be the hands, feet and voice of Jesus Christ. That's the tough news, that's the bad news, but it's also the good news because it's brought into focus a privilege and a burden that we far too long neglected. Over the years, it's been far too easy to rely on Sunday school teachers and administrators to do that work for us. When in fact, that that never really was the case. 
It's always been and always will be the responsibility of family more than church to give a child a sense of Christian purpose, the wisdom of God attained by receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And you know, in so many words, isn't that what stewardship is really all about? Taking care of that with which we've been entrusted. Certainly, a part of that responsibility is the care of our property and finances. Another part of that responsibility is the sharing of our time and talent from worship to mission and everything in between. But I think principally, when it comes right down to it, what matters most is our responsibility to bring Christian wisdom and understanding to bear upon those in our collective care, especially our kids. If we can do that, our faith is secure. But if we fail in the attempt, if we shirk from that most sacred responsibility, our faith, our Christian legacy will surely sputter and die. When I survey the landscape of our country, it appears we are lacking one key ingredient, and that is divine wisdom. We're so caught up in reinventing who we are and what we stand for that we fail to remember our original story and who God created us to be. We were founded on the premise that we are all equal in the sight of God and that personal liberty and the pursuit of happiness is our God-given inalienable right. Have we lived up to that ideal? Not by a far cry. We falter, we fall, we come up short on a, on a routine basis. But human limitation does not tarnish the ideal. We each retain the capacity to think and act in concert with God's directive. That must not. In effect, that cannot be legislated. There is no law to ensure fairness and decency in the public square. As of this moment when I'm speaking, the outcome of our presidential election still hangs in the balance. In the end, when all is said and done, may wisdom be our guide. May wisdom soothe our angst and anxiety, our frustration and our fear. May we be reminded that wisdom and wisdom alone is radiant and unfading, standing ever ready to make herself known. May our hearts and minds this day engage such a wisdom as this. May she bring us to a, a new dawn of peace and understanding, a place of unyielding courage, and instill in each of us a spirit of eternal hope for a brighter tomorrow. Let it be so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
Let us pray now as Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, receive now these words of blessing and benediction. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, let all of God's people at home say, Amen. Thank you for viewing this service of worship. If you've enjoyed or been touched by what you've seen today, please consider sharing the link to this video on your own social media that the good news of God, God's love, can reach a broader audience. In addition, during this time of social isolation, we can still share a portion of our blessings as an expression of our gratitude to God. Please take a moment to fill out a check with a contribution 
that you can mail to Bethel Church. Or if you prefer, visit our website at www.bethelonthehill.org and use the PayPal donate button near the bottom of the front page. Please give generously as you are able.